Khotan came to the U.S. at age 13 in 1979 at the very beginning of the Iranian Revolution. Khotan, your mother did not get back to the U.S. until 1984, and that was five years after you got here, four years after your father was executed. What took so long? Um, I think what happened is she went back to be with my father. She felt that we were safe here with the family that she left us with. Um, and um, I think she was imprisoned in Iran for somehow being related tangentially to daddy. And she went through so much that we don't know about. There are sort of hints and little innuendos and sort of sideway glances whispers about some of her experience in prison. Some of it sounds pretty horrific. Others were very, um, they were meant to sort of be soul crushing for her. Like what things? Um, that's what I don't know. It's like a big question mark around it. I don't know if she was assaulted. I'm not sure, but there were some intimations that things got a little rough. Uh, so, so how did you know that she was in prison? When she got to the United States. She told you? Yes, we talked about it. I, um, And this is hard for me because I cannot speak about her personal experience. I feel like I can speak about my experience of her experience because I want to be able to give her the modicum of decency of sort of a... That veil of um, privacy, what she wants to discuss. But it was pretty traumatic as a daughter standing on this side, not knowing what had happened and how she would react in certain circumstances. It was almost like, and I, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know, but it was almost like a PTSD, you know, post traumatic stress disorder, almost at that level of. So, what did you see her doing once she was back in the U.S. that was a manifestation of what may be PTSD? Um, it was just a uh, certain very innocuous um, circumstances that her reaction would be too strong, whether it was physical proximity or... And this was a change from how you knew her from yes, before. Yes, very, very different. And so, um, yeah, she. it took her a while to get here. She actually escaped from Iran on a motorcycle because uh, her mother realized that she can't stay in Iran. She would go from where she was staying with her mother in northern Iran. It's about a three and a half, four hour drive to Tehran almost weekly to try to get her passport because it was all confiscated. And in Iran, the mother ha and the children are all in the same passport or they were. So when they took her passport, when she arrived back in Tehran, nobody had a passport. You know, so she was trying to get that back. They keep saying, come back tomorrow. And she has stories of waiting outside of some ministry's door overnight. And, you know, she heard all kinds of things. We're not going to let you go until your daughter becomes a prostitute, your son becomes a drug dealer, you know, that stuff. So she knew she had to try to get to us. They paid a sum of money, something equivalent of, I don't know what, $30,000 or something of that nature to um, these border drug runners to get her out of the country. And so uh, it's so bizarre that the people who turned out to be most trustworthy were these individuals who are involved in contraband. And they took her out and got her into Pakistan. And from there, she was with the International Rescue Committee. They assisted her to get to Spain. And from there, she got to the United States.